Does anger keep you awake at night? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Cornelia Corey Ten Boom grew up in a devoutly religious family. During World War II, she and her family harbored hundreds of Jews to protect them from arrest by Nazi authorities. Betrayed by a fellow Dutch citizen, the entire family was imprisoned. Corey survived this harrowing experience and started a worldwide ministry and later told her story in a book entitled The Hiding Place. This was made into a movie in 1975. Cory Ten Boom told of not being able to forget the wrong that had been done to her. She had forgiven the person, but she kept rehashing the incident and so couldn't sleep. Finally, Cory cried out to God for help in putting the problem to rest. His help came in the form of a kindly Lutheran pastor. Cory wrote, To whom I confessed my failure after two sleepless weeks. Up in the church tower, he said, nodding out the window, is a bell which is rung by pulling on a rope. But you know what? After the sexton lets go of the rope, the bell keeps on swinging, first ding, then dong, slower and slower until there's a final dong and it stops. I believe the same thing is true of forgiveness. When we forgive, we take our hand off the rope. But if we've been tugging at our grievances for a long time, we mustn't be surprised if the old angry thoughts keep coming for a while They're just the ding-dongs of the old bell, slowing down. And so it proved to be. There were a few more midnight reverberations, a couple of dings when the subject came up in my conversations. But the force, which was my willingness in the matter, had gone out of them. They came less and less often, and at the last stopped altogether. We can trust God not only above our emotions, but also above our thoughts. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus tells us that our love for one another should go farther than that of the Pharisees and scribes. The laws that they have handed down from Moses will not mean anything if the intent is bereft of love. Love at its core is shown in forgiveness without conditions, even if the other person being forgiven is the one who is wrong. It is not easy, but it is possible. How? by asking the Holy Spirit to give you the grace to forgive. Sin has its beginnings in our minds. When you look at the Ten Commandments, it is a series of don'ts. The fifth says, do not kill. Anger is the cause of killing. It is better to keep silent when you are angry and just offer your sacrifice for the well-being of your family members, for the souls in purgatory, and especially for the resolution of your problem with the person who is the focal point of your anger. Do not be provoked by your anger to insult and worse, to killing. We all know the destructive power of anger as we all have experienced it. In anger, we may disrespect some people with our manner of speaking to them and about them. When you are provoked to anger, Jesus tells us that you cannot offer your sacrifices to the altar of God. Be reconciled first to your brother, then you can offer your gift. We must make peace before we meet our judge, and we do not know when this will be. Do so before it is too late. Let go of the rope of anger, and let the Holy Spirit lull you to nights of contented sleep and the freedom that leads to joy. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, free me from my anger, and let your Holy Spirit plant the seeds of forgiveness in my heart. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.